Today he's going to talk about connections, trust, and relationship. They are the important success factors to make, make a thriving speaker business. Learn what matters to your customers and fellow speakers and build on those three success factors. Jonathan Lowe. It's been a great journey, <laughs> getting there. All right, okay. Uh, the traffic was pretty good, so yeah, it works, yeah, yeah. There we go. That's my fits. <laughs> Imagine, how would Great relationships make a difference for you. How has your connection been over the last several years or months at PSA Holland? How would you rank it? If there is one thing that you would give yourself, how important do you feel relationships are? Would you agree that relationships are important? Yes. Yeah? So, how can we actually build even better connection, better relationship within the speaking fraternity to really enhance the opportunities that are surrounding us? So, very quickly, I am going to do a quick crowdsourcing. I don't have Survey Monkey today, but we will have the survey around the room. Is that okay? Yes. Is it okay to have a little bit of participation? Yes. Cool? Right. Now, very shortly, I would like you to take a piece of paper that you have right in front of you. If you can help me out with that. You've got that? And this is what I'd like you to do. Here are the instructions. I would like you to do up an inner circle, and have five outer circles. Everyone had a chance to do that? So about five circles within the circles. Are we good? Excellent. In the most inner circle, I'd like you to put a score of 10, followed by 9, 8, 7, and 6. Are we good so far? Great. Now, I would like you to individually, on your own, think about 10 person that you interact with on a daily basis. It could be your customer, it could be your family members, it could be speakers' friends, your mastermind group. Do you have at least 10 person that you work with? Daily. Daily, over the last five, five days a week, last two weeks, you have got at least 10 people that you interact with? I hope so. <laughs> All right, you have that people in mind? Cool. Now, I would like you to give a ranking. Where, how much do you trust that person that you have listed down? Would that deserve a 10? A 10 is total trust. I totally trust them. You have high trust, very high. A 9, a little bit lower. An 8, a little bit lower than Nine, and it goes down. Could you put down their initials or their names next to whichever circle you feel they should deserve to be in? Could you do that right now? So the 10 person that you have in mind, where would that be? In which circle would that be? Nice. Now, I would like to do this. I would like you to share with your partner. So find a partner and share with them what are the qualities of these people that you've written down. You don't have to share with them who they are, but share with them the qualities of what makes them in your 10 or a 9. Anyone got some people are a 10, circle of 10? Okay, circle of 9? Good. So share with your partner what are the qualities of those people at a 10 or a 9. Could you do that? So very quickly, now, very important instruction, before you start, before you start, 
the moment if you see my hand raise up, could everyone raise up their right hand? It means it's time to stop. <laughs> All right? So to facilitate the whole discussion. So you may begin right now, and you only have three minutes. So you got to make it real quick, very quickly. Find a partner, share with your partner. What are some elements and qualities? Okay, the moment you see the hands up, it's time to finish. Okay, so what we're going to do is, I'd like you to shout out as speakers. What are some of the qualities that uh, you heard from your partners, right? What makes those people in your circle of 10 or 9? Can I hear out some of them? Authentic. They're authentic, okay. They're honest. Vulnerable. What was that? Vulnerable. Vulnerable, okay. Reliable. Trust. 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 Trustworthy. Okay. Loyalty. They are? Loyal. Loyal. Okay. They love me. That they love you. Yeah, and I love yeah. them back. Awesome. Great. Anything from behind? Just to make sure our friends from behind, Paul, you know, anyone from behind? Corner. Sorry? They're always in your corner. They're always in your corner. Yeah. And it's why you... So they always back you up, okay? Back you up. Okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three more. Respect. Respect. What else? Openness. And they give you support. Okay, great. So we have got a list. So please say thank you to your partner for sharing openly. Give them a hand. So, my question is right now, how many of you, now this came from you, so this was my quick survey monkey style at PSA Holland at this conference, right? Uh, so this came from you. Now, how many of you would say that you are a person that people will say, you are someone who is authentic? You are someone who is honest, you are vulnerable, you are reliable, you are trustworthy, you are loyal, and you are someone that will back me up? You are respectful, you are open, and you are supportive. So out of the 10 that you have written down, how many of them would be yours? I'm not asking for an answer right now, but it's a good reflection, isn't it? Because this actually came from you, because you said these are the 10 elements that makes people trust you more. You have better connection, you have better relationship. So whatever numbers you have right now, it would be a nice way to say, hey, maybe I've got about five. I'd like to build it up to about six, seven, eight, nine, or ten out of this list. My next question to you is, out of those ten people that you have given a rating, you remember the ten people? If you have given them a nine, how much do you think they will rate you if I ask them to do a rating for you? Would they give you a nine? Or would they give you a 10? Or would it be lower? Would that be an interesting thought? Yeah. So how do we develop better relationship? So trust is really a key element of it, isn't it? So how do we bring up our numbers so that you can really have better engagement? And I'll be happy to share a couple of perspectives and share with you on the four C's, on some of the things that has been mentioned here, and what are the things you can do even better as speakers. So the first one is this thing called competence. Right, so the first element to really enhance or to build better relationships is about competence. So what is competence? What in your mind is competence? 
So competence is really your ability, <coughs> your skills and knowledge as a speaker, as a presenter. Where do you rank yourself? And over the last two days, we have seen some pretty amazing speakers, haven't we? How was this morning? Great, isn't it? You've heard some great content, people who are willing to share. So as you're sitting down there, where would you rate your level of competency in your respective area? Did I start off knowing everything? No, I am still learning. I started this journey about 10 years ago as I begin to have this vision of perhaps making a little bit of a difference in the world. And in my part where I come from in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, many of the people are not too much into professional speaking, but training is much a higher percentage. But I decided to join the Malaysian Association of Professional Speakers because I was intrigued. And uh, having worked in the hotel business for about 20 years, I decided to say, hey, you know, I'm going to make the full-time decision 10 years ago to leave a very comfortable position in the industry. And did it work out well? Like every entrepreneur, the first one was great. A lot of activities, money-wise, zero. Second one, how was it? It was great, a lot of activities. I was attending conference, I was doing a lot of stuff. Results, zero still. Third one, fourth one, and by the fifth month, my family got very concerned. <laughs> are, are you sure you're doing the right thing? I mean, you, you, you are successful in an organization. Why do you want to become a speaker or a trainer? You've got to bring money to the table. And I said, you know, I, I believe that if I do this diligently, long enough, great things will happen. So I kept my faith. And by the six months, there was an opportunity that came from Shanghai, and one of the regional hotels were actually looking for a sales and service speaker and a facilitator. I submitted my resume, and it went to the general managers in Indonesia, and before long, they actually engaged me. And that was my first international break. To be honest, I didn't really know how I got it, <laughs> as it happens. And then I asked the vice president of sales for the hotel group, I said, wow, what, what actually made the buying decision? How did you decide to select me among the other professionals? And he said, you know, one of the general managers actually worked with you, and uh, apparently you were in one of his hotels helping him on a particular Sunday. Particular Sunday? And it dawned on me. That general manager was Jim. On that particular Sunday when I was still at the Marriott International Hotel, I flew over to Surabaya in Indonesia to support his team in opening up. And because it was a Sunday, he came back to the office and said, Hey, John, what are you doing? You know, it's a weekend. Go and see a little bit of Surabaya. Lots of great stuff to see. And I said, Well, Jim, I think I'll do that after I spend enough time with your team. I know it's Sunday, but your team is here, so I'd like to help them as best as possible. Never did I realize that moment came back big time to me. That moment that I decided what I call serve it forward came back big time to me when I started my entrepreneurial journey. And what I got for that particular job, thank heaven, it helped me over the six months that I didn't have anything. And that was my first break. And that was how I really appreciated the power of relationship and what are the things that can actually do. When you begin to serve it forward, without really asking for things to come back, great things come back to you. How many of you have experienced that before? Yeah. So the first one is really about your competence. How do you build your competence? Because at that time, I was doing a lot of work in the hotel industry. I continued to build on that competence skill, right? Helping more hotels, helping more professionals in hotel. That is my core segmentation of what I do now over the last 10 years. And of course, besides that, 
I come for conferences like this, right? And we had a great session yesterday, a wonderful time of people sharing endlessly. Um, I'm going to move this down here a little bit, so move this away, okay? So there was a lot of opportunities to learn from different professionals. And some of my friends, Paul, he's coming to visit Malaysia end of this month, where we have the Malaysian Association of Professional Speakers Convention. So if you're interested to come, you're most welcome, right? So talk to me, but great conferences. Next month, Australia, Gold Coast, beautiful place. In May, South Africa and Pretoria. USA, Phoenix, July, great opportunity, but you got to invest. And that is what I really love when Neil say. He sets aside time to really equip himself. So the first one is really about building your competence. Find out where you're strong in. And of course, we got a great group yesterday. Wonderful group of people. The second C is this. The second C is really about commitment. Now, what did Neil say about commitment this morning? Just checking. <laughs> it's hard work, right? So commitment, I like to even extend a little bit further, is about doing the things when you don't feel like doing it. Right? Commitment is really about saying, doing, and actually making it happen. I was here in London two days ago, and yesterday I decided to take a morning exercise. And one of my joy is really about taking pictures. Wonderful, finding the best angle and the best places and traction. And I managed to capture this. And I just realized it was actually on the brochure in your booklet too. <laughs> right, welcome to Leiden. And they actually had that same picture here. But when you're committed, you will be able to find the best angle that your customer requires. You will find the beauty of what is available at that time. So this was captured at about 9, 12 in the morning where the sun was just coming up, so the color was really great. And I was just glad I was there. I could have said, no, maybe I'll just sleep in a little bit, you know, it doesn't start at 2 o'clock, you know. But I was committed to the course to really, and for my friends that actually got connected with me at Facebook, you know I like to post a lot of pictures, a lot of sceneries, <laughs> right? So I do that a lot because I like to share and if that brings value to them, I've done my part. And the same philosophy I bring to my customers. It's about showing up, committed to what you're doing, finding the beauty in each one of them. Now the third one is this, it's about consistency, right? It's about consistency. Now, consistency is about showing up every time. How consistent do you get to speak and you give you 110% on the main platform, but when you get a concurrent session, does that change? Well, are you consistent all the time in giving your 110% wherever you are? Customer looks for that. Smaller group, bigger group. You gotta be giving your 100, if not 110%. That is on the business side. But what about the family? <coughs> We get so involved in driving the business as entrepreneurs. Are the family part of the game? Are they part of the process? This is my family. So that's my wife and my daughter. She's uh, 12 years old this year. That's Chloe. That's Wu Yi. And again, it's always tough, you know, when children are young and you need to be traveling to different places. But I'm really thankful. And it was my commitment. I told them, every day, I will call back. I will call back to either wish them morning or to wish them good night. So Malaysia is seven hours ahead. So by three o'clock today will be a good time for me to wish them good night. And thank goodness for FaceTime. Right? You can do FaceTime and that helps to have that consistent bonding with your family. Bring them along your journey. That's my lessons that I've learned. It's much more fun when they are supporting, encouraging, giving you the very best. So what are the three C's that you have heard so far? Competence. Competence, right? Your ability. What else? Your commitment. And the third one is? 
So what do you think is the fourth one that is so crucial? Call. Sorry? Call. Call? Call back home. A go back home? <laughs> yeah, well, let's not see. Maybe it's cold calling huh? because Victor is here, right? Yeah. Um, so, so the fourth one is really about caring. Caring. Now, this 4C did not come from me. It comes from an organization called Six Seconds that specializes in emotional intelligence. They do a lot of research that helps organizations to see how people can be more engaged, more effective. And as they did this study on trust, they found that these are the four elements, factors that contribute to higher trust, higher engagement. When you have the competence, when you have the opportunities to be committed to what you do, when you have the consistency in doing it, and at the same time showing that you care. Now, to my friends here from so many countries, from Netherlands, from Belgium, how is care in this culture? Is it pretty good? Do you think people technically care a lot for one another? You know, I've got some interesting experience. I, I, I came arrived at the, um, the airport, right? And I wanted to buy some tickets. You know, <laughs> so I wanted to buy some tickets, you know, uh, to come to the different train. Uh, so I was asking a couple of questions, and I said, would this ticket be valid to travel at different times? Yeah, 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 yeah it's good. Yeah. Okay, sounded like a German for a moment. <laughs> and then I asked, you know, they issued a ticket, and I asked again, does this apply? I've told you that earlier. Ooh. Never ask a second time, just to be sure, when you are in Netherlands. <laughs> and one thing I learned that uh, people are really efficient. You know, they are so task oriented, they are super efficient, their time. I just found the engagement a little bit different. <laughs> you know, I would appreciate it a little bit different because in Asia, the care. It is a real big thing, right? And even in the Chinese language, they have this thing called Quan Si, which is about the relationship, the cares that you have. So again, as you're engaging with your customers, with one another speakers, how many of you have mastermind group? When was the last time you sent them a note or called them or said, thank you so much, you know, you have been a real help to me, you have been a real resource to me? Yeah, this week, yeah, some of you are doing it, right? Some of you, oh yeah, that, that's been some time, you know. Maybe I should. What about the 10 people that you have written down the names? Have you ever said thank you to them? Have you ever said, I appreciate you? I love you. You know, it's, it's really interesting. As I was coming here with this bicycle, or what you call, the fits. You know, I kind of like look at the relationship like this. You know, here we have got our business, the will of our business. And here we have the will of our family. And it is an interesting balance, isn't it? Can you have more of the business and leave the family behind? We can't. It doesn't work that way. It is about the connection. Now, this is a great, great thing to have, isn't it? Real things happen by the way it is. What needs to happen? You need to be the person that actually gets up, get up onto the bike, and cycle. The more you cycle, the wheels move. If not, it's just a stationary bike. Nothing happens. Relationship will not happen. And you as the person, can make a decision on where you want the direction to go. You want to have more business, bring along the family. Bring along the family, have more business. And you sometimes need to break. And breaking is so important. And that is one of the things I learned from news today. Sometimes, <coughs> the alarm rings back. And they say, hey, John, ego, alarm bells, ego and we have to really put the brake and say hey 
time for more self-awareness. I really need to check myself and find out what is important, what are the values. And we do it so naturally every day, especially in this country. I've never seen so many bicycles in one whole city. But I love it, right? So the next time you ride a bike, it is all about cycling. And as you cycle, as you pedal, the momentum picks up. How fast, how much you want to do, it depends on you, really. But you have a choice. You can lead. Lead with the 4C. Begin to become competent in even managing your bicycle. Become really committed to take the bike whenever you have the chance to. Be consistent in whatever you deliver, wherever you're cycling to. And what you can do is, I'm really happy about this. Because as I walked around the street in Leiden and Amsterdam, I'm really sometimes worried without be crashed on by one of the bikes, but they actually really care. <laughs> right? So they'd rather avoid you than, you know, so it is in your hands. Right? The opportunity of the 4C is actually in your hands. So one thing I'd like to really encourage you to do is this. Incorporate the bike into your art of building great relationship, right? A simple metaphor, but a powerful tool. Press the brake when you need to. If you're moving in the wrong direction, that doesn't resonate with your value. Have the brakes there. When the alarm sounds like this, make sure, listen to speakers who have been there, who have done it, who are able to give you valuable advice, because those are the jewels that you can never get from anywhere else except through PSA Holland. <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Ah, I'm not too convinced about it. Right? Yes. That's right, right? So when you begin to hear more of this, we're going to say, who is able to give me more feedback? Because can you imagine, in one year's time, the relationship that you built in this room it's going to transform your relationship. It's going to transform your business. And how many believe that this will happen? But it starts with you. You have to be the person on the bike. Nothing happens until you are on the bike. And if there's one thing I'd like to share as a bonus to you, it is this philosophy of generosity. Having those four C's are really great. But my lessons and my journey has really been the generosity of all the speakers that I've met. Top-notch speakers, but yet so humble. Top-notch professional, but is willing to have a coffee with me. When I was nobody, I'm still a nobody, but I'm just amazed at the level of generosity they are able to help you in your business. And the only thing can happen if you were to ask. And one of the ego thing is, sometimes as speakers, we are too proud to even ask for help because we can do it all on our own. So my encouragement to you is this. The next time you speak, get someone to share feedback with you. And more than that, I would like you, if you can, write down on a white piece of paper, what are my strengths? How can I help you? And... On the next, at the bottom of that, what can I do for you? Can you imagine if you circulate that piece of paper around and you get it back end of the day? People will know what you are great at and how you can help others. Wouldn't that be a great list to have? Yeah, that would be a powerful way to have it. So, ladies and gentlemen, it has been my privilege to be able to share a brief moment with you and I call you as my family, when I'm away from my family. So thank you for making me feel so welcome. You have been all a blessing to me. Thank you so much. Thank you.